Today, we're going to go over Ruben Almarum's 343 Sporting Tactics. This tactic actually went 30 games unbeaten and has a very high win percentage. Very nice to do a different formation as well, obviously being a 343. If you do enjoy the tactics on this channel, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a comment below on any future managers you want to see. And any console or mobile viewers, go and check out the second channel in the description because we're posting frequently on there now too. So go over and say hello. But let's get into the test and phase. First team, of course, is going to be Sporting. First up is going to be his current team, Sporting. Obviously over in the Portuguese division. One of the better teams in that league alongside of Porto and Benfica, of course. A couple of good teams alongside of them. So not completely a one-horse race, but we almost made it a one-horse race as you are going to see here. Very close in the end, but still only failing to win three of the potential 34 games. We win 31 out of 34, draw one, and the two losses are against Benfica and obviously a team we probably should or definitely should be beating. But overall, still a very good season. It's going to be big Victor. And now this guy here, is he going to leave? Because a lot a lot of teams are interested in him and he is very good not only in the game but also in real life scoring 53 goals Marita comes in with a 7.67 highest average rating and also picking up the most assist coming in at 29 well it's going to be Antonio Adan picking up a 96% pass completion from the goalkeeper position now going over to some of the team stats it is going to be 102 goals scored in the league and only 13 goals conceded we did pick up a couple of red cards but to be honest that never really affects you over an entire season as long as you've got good squad depth and you can manage it very very well now going over to what we won of course it is going to be the Europa League against Inter Milan a very very good final that was so I'll be sure to include that inside of the match highlights and also the Portuguese Cup against Porto now it wasn't a complete sweep. Unfortunately, the quadruple was bottled because Benfica sort of ruined that by winning the Portuguese League Cup. But still, overall, a very, very good first season. And what made it better, obviously, is winning that Europa League because that's not always a guarantee with a team like this. Now, going over to the team stats, we are going to feature in a lot of them. And what you get with this tactic as well is not only goals, but a lot of possession as well, traditionally. So, fewest conceded at 13, very good defensively, a mixture between having a really good defensive backline, but also having lots of the ball. Clean sheets coming in at 24 a lot of clean sheets compared to the rest in the division 62 percent of the ball very close with porto and obviously you can see there with rio and benfica a lot of teams dominating the ball in this league but of course we're going to come out on top fewer shots against very good to see most shots saw at bang on 700 very rare you see that exactly on a hundred number most goals at 102 again porto very very close behind they did have a good season to be fair to them and also the most points coming in at 2.76 again obviously going to be very close with f FC Porto. Now going over to that data hub, it is going to be bang on three goals a game, only 0.38 conceded. Again, this is not the most defensive tactic ever, but the reason why it is so low is because we had so much of the ball. So if we've got the ball, they can't score obviously. Shots per game, getting on towards 21, an 89% pass completion, and a tackle win ratio is the only thing maybe we could have wanted a little bit higher, but it didn't affect the season at all, so I'm not going to complain. Over to the Polish League now, and we are going to test with Lega, obviously a very good team in that division right there, and we actually do win the treble, probably to be expected, but I always like to throw in random leagues with a three at the back, because sometimes you simply just want to see how many divisions can this actually play well in, so this is by far going to be the two best teams of the video. Technically, this is the best team in terms of like the most dominant in their league and we come out and do win the treble obviously being not only the Polish FA Cup the Super Cup but of course the league as well again not failing to win many of the games at all we win 28 out of a potential 34 and only lose two of the games 103 goals scored and only 19 goals conceded and on this occasion we halve the red cards from two to one so not too bad over an entire season it's going to be Ernest Amusi coming in with 26 goals across all competitions and Jose picking up a 7.5 highest average rating well it's is going to be Makano Bako picking up 15 assists also across all competitions. Casper Tobias picks up a 95% pass completion and again I did briefly discuss it but the league was really no competition. An 18 point difference from first to second place. Team stat wise we are going to feature in absolutely everything bar one so we're going to talk about it very quickly most points per game at 2.59 very similar amount of goals at 103 621 shots so a few less than we had with sporting fewer shots against at 207 possession wise again very high amounts of possession with 63 percent of the ball on this occasion pass completion at 89 percent rank one in that as well most dribbles being made at 584 and of course defensively we were very very solid and the only stat line we wouldn't have won because it would be impossible is going to be most tackles won because we were the ones on the ball so therefore we didn't really have the opportunity to be making the tackle so this is literally the perfect clean sweep 
we won everything possible in terms of the team stats. Now, going over to that data hub, it is going to be just over three goals a game, 3.03, but we'll say three to be accurate, three goals a game, 0.56 goals conceded, over 18 shots at 18.26. Obviously, the pass completion was 89, but we were so close to it being 80 or 90%, should I say, and a tackle win ratio coming in at 77 0.17. So overall, a good season for what we won. Team stats and the league stats and the date arb. The perfect sweep. And up next is going to be a very popular team at the moment. That is going to be Maidstone in the Valorama National League South. And we come out and nearly put on an invincible display in this division, which rarely happens in a league where you play 46 games. And unfortunately, it was one team which cost us. We did, however, win 41 out of a potential 46. So I am not going to complain at all as that nearly is the perfect season. 132 goals scored in the team stats and only 38 goals conceded, ranking us the best and the best and also the best for red cards, picking up a total of zero. It's going to be Ogo Aboe, Ogo Aboe coming in, sorry, with 26 goals, and Bavesh Garung picking up a 7.39 highest average rating. We're going to have two top assisters coming in, and it is going to be Smith and Sam Korn, both with 18, and it is going to be Lucas Kovalan coming in with a 91% pass completion. Going over to some of the team stats, we are going to feature inside of six of them. That is going to be the most points per game at 2.76, the most goals at 132, which is very clear of East Eastbourne Borough, 42 actually difference, which is a lot of goals. Most shots are over 800, which is really, really impressive. The fewer shots against are 323. Possession, we were up there just to prove it. We weren't rank one, but even with a very small team, 64% of the ball. And clearly with this team, we might have sacrificed a bit of possession and had a lot more shots, but still... 64% of the ball is not to turn your nose up at. Fewest conceded at 38, quite close for Bath City there to be fair, and clean sheets coming in at 24, so very, very good in all aspects of the game. Going over to the date hub, it is going to be just under three goals a game on this occasion, probably to be expected with a weaker team at 2.87 goals per game, conceded still way under a goal a game at 0.83, over 17 and a half shots every single match, a very high tackle win ratio, obviously picking up zero red cards, and a pass completion of 88. 8.73 so again a very good season but up next and a very very tough challenge that is going to be 15th place predicted Fleetwood Town obviously over in Skybet League 1 and we have come out and won the league it was not as convincing as what it was with Maidstone obviously but we got the job done to be fair to us out of 45 games we still have got one game to play but the league is completely wrapped up now so it is pointless playing it um out of them 45 games, we only actually lost six. So very, very impressive scenes. The max amount of games we would have lost in the league if we were to play this and lose obviously would be seven, which still is very, very good. Jack Marriott picks up 19 goals. Well, it is going to be a Brendan Waradu picking up a 7.22 with the highest average rating. Sean Rooney picking up 16 assists. And also going over to this again, very, very impressed with this. 94 goals scored in the league, ranking us the best. 43 goals conceded. I wasn't sure if that was going to be enough to get us the best stat line, but clearly it was and again zero red cards so a very very good discipline season from Fleetwood and Maidstone now in terms of the other cups I'm not going to be honest or not going to be honest I'm going to be honest it wasn't the best in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup but we are Fleetwood we've got to have a little bit of you know We've got to be realistic. We're not going to win these trophies. We did get to the final of that Bristol Street Movers trophy. Unfortunately, Derby were a little bit too much for us, though. But going over to the team stats, we are going to feature in six of them. That is going to be the most clean sheets, very close with Leighton Orient. The fewest conceded at 43. Again, pretty close with Wigan there. The fewest shots against at 398. The most shots for at 745. The most goals at 94. Very close with Charlton and Peterborough, not far behind. And also the most goals coming in at the most goals, most points coming in at 2.07 now i will say in terms of the stats is going to be probably the closest we're going to see so it is just under a goal per game conceded which is obviously the main aim especially with a three at the back you rarely expect that 16.56 shots per game a pass completion of 89.25 the tackle win ratio the highest has ever been at 79.23 and just over just over two goals every single game so i'm going to take these sets of results because i think it has proven it can perform in almost every league we did play with well it did actually to be fair obviously the better team you are, the better results you're going to have but consistently possession wise you're going to be getting a 60 plus percent so if you're a big fan of possession and free at the backs this is going to be one for you. A couple of massive finals though for this sporting team. The first one is going to be that Portuguese Cup final against 
Porto in a 6-1 win, which is very, very mad. And I will show you their team just to prove they weren't playing any under-18 teams. That would have been a penalty to kick things off, but a very good finish from Pedro. And watch this right now, because this is definitely going to be made into a TikTok. This potentially is the worst own goal I have seen this year for me on this channel. Now, Pepe just, you know, plays it into Gonzi Sal. He goes into Nico. It's a bit of a lump from Varela. And what is that about? Gifted them away back into the game. That was their only goal of the game. Luckily for us, we were sort of on goal score and form because before half time, we get it into Big Victor in the middle and he puts us 2 1 up again. And after that moment there, we were sort of on fire. Everything was clicking. Fresneda actually redeems himself with an assist into Victor into the middle. And this guy just couldn't stop scoring. He's an absolute demon on the pitch. Victor out wide into Fresneda again, who's going to go alone. And to be fair to him, despite the own goal, he really did turn up in the final. So I'm not going to be too critical, but it was a very, very questionable own goal. As it is going to be, I believe, Quartes there picking up a very good set piece goal as Pedro tucks in a set piece, which I feel like should have been saved. But as you can see, they had a very good team out, but just didn't turn up to the final. This is potentially the most dramatic Europa League final I've ever seen in FM, as all of the goals from both teams finished inside of 22 minutes. That's going to be a 2-1 win for us, and we got cooking. We really did. Inside of 10 seconds, we were looking lively. The ball goes through, and is this the quickest goal you've ever seen in FM? Through to Victor, and he actually finishes it inside of 17 seconds. 16 seconds exactly is when that ball hits the net. What a way to start the Europa League final. And we just kept going, to be fair. This is eight minutes in. Edwards down the right-hand side. He's going to cut it back, take his time, ball in into Quartes. Obviously, previously was from a set piece. And he gets a goal. And to be fair to him, they do get a goal back. But after this goal went in, I went to the defensive variant and they offered nothing for the rest of the game. So we're going to take the trophy. We love it. But now, of course, over to your favourite part of the video. That is going to be the tactical breakdown. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel we're pushing towards 20k and we are getting there very very quickly and also if you are interested in joining the other 2200 people you can come over and join that patreon in the description below where you are going to get access to all three of these tactics in one simple download you get early video early tactic release you get priority in the tactic and rebuild requests you get one-on-one -on -one help you also get access to the console the mobile tactics and you also get access to the current giveaway which is going to be a 50 pound paypal gift card so definitely come over and say hello loads of reasons to do so but let's go over and talk about the player roles then so we are going to kick things off with the sweeper keeper who is simply going to be on the default instructions very rarely do you need to have many instructions added to this role because he usually just does his job to perfection and that's exactly what we saw in these match highlights go and over to the back line it is going to be the central defender who is simply going to be on defend quite basic in the middle a very good option is to have a cover central defender because it's always helpful to have this in a free back because we've got three center backs we don't always need them being on the same sort of line one just being a little bit deeper to sweep up is a very very good idea next to him is going to be a ball playing defender on dribble more i'm going to explain why that is like that in a, just in a short time because it does also link in with the fullback so we are going to talk about that very shortly the right hand sided is going to be a complete wing back on attack on dribble more and also run wide and on the left hand side is going to be a complete wing back on support simply on run wide so the reason why on the right hand side the central defender is simply on default is because this wing back is going to be very 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 attacking and on this side he's going to be sort of attacking so that is why i've allowed the ball playing defender on the left hand side to dribble a little bit more despite him also being a ball playing defender so he should naturally be good on the ball so that is why on this side we have got that sort of selected and on this side we don't because the wing back on this side is going to be naturally a lot more attacking to the midfield though the first one is going to be a box to box simply on support and next to him it is going to be a deep line playmaker simply on support no i've not made a mistake i've not missed anything that is going to be the player roles for today and it is because the deep line playmaker is the perfect role to have in the team because he sits back he does defend as well but he will pluck out the long balls from either the wing backs overlapping or obviously this front three so a very crucial role in the team which in my opinion cannot be replaced and talking about um, you know irreplaceable players would be the box to box because i wanted a role here which is simply going to get forward and get back and when you look at that in the football dictionary that is going to be a box-to-box -box midfield player because I feel like having a central midfield player be a little bit too a little bit too stagnant a little bit too calm and we don't want anyone to attack and who isn't going to defend as well so having that box-to-box -box in this team is really really crucial on the left hand side is going to be the inside forward on attack who simply is going to be on shoot more often now obviously this was for Pedro now if you're not playing a sporting or you're playing with a team with bad finishing in that position so your wingers got I don't know under 13 finishing for example then I would definitely not have this on because you're going to waste shots at goal but if you have got a good finisher on the wing definitely have it selected and on the right hand side we're going to have the inverted winger on support simply on roam from position and to finish it off the cherry on top is going to be the advanced sword on attack 
on shoot more often. Same instruction applies if you are playing very low league football. Your striker has got awful finishing. Firstly, sorry to hear it. But secondly, do not have shoot more often on. This is very dependent on what your player's stats are. Well, over to the team instructions, all based off a tiki-taka style on the positive, the positive mentality. We are going to have a fair bit to discuss today as it is going to be fairly narrow to get things going with the attack and width. Very important with this formation because it sort of compresses it in and makes it play a much more fluid way of playing football. And honestly, it's how you're able to have such good high levels of possession at this current time. Underlap left and underlap right is going to be a much needed instruction for this team. Focus on the play through the middle and playing out from the back. So as you can see, it is set up for one thing. That is going to be possession and underlap and run. So a very good, very good sign to see. Very good sight to see, sorry, if you are a big fan of possession football because you're definitely going to get that with this tactic. Passing directness, of course, is going to be set to shorter and the tempo is going to remain on standard. So not too much of an aggressive tactic for you guys to play as well, which is why I also do say you can play this in lower league football because it's not that aggressive to play at all. The final third is going to be set to mix crosses and work the ball into the box. Again, if you are struggling for a goal, you can simply untick this and your players will not be as sort of fussy on where the ball finishes in terms of before they take a shot. Yes, this might not mean resulting in the highest quality chances, but if you are after a goal definitely Desperately, it's better off just getting the shots off at the goal, to be honest. And lastly, it is going to be be more expressive when it comes to the creative freedom. The transition is going to be nice and simple, but a fair few instructions. It's going to be counter press, counter distribute quickly very aggressive in that in that regards of things obviously when we have got the ball i do want to be counter attacking that doesn't mean we're going to lump the ball long because we never did in the highlights it just means we're not going to be stagnant and staying still we're not going to be holding the shape we're going to be moving with the ball and that's exactly what we're going to be doing with this system we're going to play it to the center backs obviously we have got three and to do that personally i have chosen take short goal kicks lastly out of possession we are going to instantly whack that high press and line up we are going to go with the high defensive line we're going to max out the trigger press and lastly very basic same instruction to be fair prevent short goalkeeper distribution now although this looks very very basic usually i've got to get stuck in on all of this malarkey for this tactic i wouldn't say it represents him very well so i would definitely not recommend having any of this stuff on because i don't really think you need it to represent the way he plays and that is going to give you your default variant but stick around because you need the attacking and defensive ones to go with it let's get into it would be a good idea to show you a couple of games from the Lega save just to see some of the goals because a lot of these games resulted in sort of six nil wins five nil wins we absolutely dominated everyone in this division now, i'm not going to be the best with the names i will be honest so we're going to watch the highlights and appreciate the goals because the last thing we want to do is offend anyone by mispronouncing many names if i haven't already done so so apologies if i have already but we got off to a very hot start there two goals inside of 15 minutes very good quality goals as well and to be honest a lot of the goals you are going to score with this tactic are going to be very attractive goals on the eye now sometimes they are going to come from set pieces which is why i always say at the moment download the ones i've got from fm scout or you can't download them can you but copy the ones from fm scout i am going to have a video coming out very shortly but to be honest i'm waiting for the february update for the set piece video and the training video to make sure they are 100 percent accurate and also you can use them past that update obviously i don't want to annoy you guys by releasing something you can only use for short term so overall that game load of goals going in done most of it waffling about the set pieces but i would recommend getting them as well It'd be a fun game to watch and a 7-0 win and i actually go down to 10 men just after the second half whistle which is the worst way to start a second half of football we got things started off very early on a very good goal there to be fair very powerful finish there from diaz into the bottom left hand corner birch down the left hand side now cutting her back it's just it's very fluent football i mean that's a very interesting one. Does that go down as an own goal? It does go down as an own goal. I thought it was. I was going to say. A very interesting finish there. But to be honest, this team we were playing, they had absolutely nothing going for them right from the get-go. You're looking at a team here that conceded five before before the second half even kicks in. The press we had on them, they simply couldn't hack it. And the way we were passing the ball about and the finishing was absolutely immaculate. Nothing they could do at all. Playing it side to side, building the ball up very quickly. And you can see here the options we had on here from this guy. We had an overlapping run here from back Baku. Also, if you would have waited, we had a great run here from Khan. And also, the striker was in as well. He goes over the top into Diaz, who squares it across first time. And you are not going to get much more of a well-created goal than that. As a penalty comes in, into the top left-hand corner. And one more goal, just to put the nail in the coffin. A set-piece, back stick. 
a shock and defender. Of course, over to the attack and variant and a defensive variant, but first the attack and one. Again, Patreon members can get all of these three in one simple download, but I do include them in the video so you can clop, copy it, copy it, not copy it, for click for click. Now, we are going to go over the player roles first in the attack and variant. A variant just designed to really get more goals out of this system and push for, obviously, more goals. If you need them, whether you're drawing, you're a goal down, you know you've got something to switch to, which is going to take the game to them a little bit more. So the goalkeeper remains exactly the same. In fact, the entire back line remains simply unchanged because we made a lot more changes going up the field. So on the left, the complete wing back is going to be now on attack, on run wide, and on the right is going to remain the same as the default. So a complete wing back on dribble more and also run wide with the ball. Now, the same player roles in the midfield, but they are changed. So the deep line playmaker is told to now play more direct passes because there's a bit more urgency in the tactic now. So yes... We are going to sacrifice a little bit of possession to go more direct, but when we are trying to score goals, that is very, very important to do so. The box-to-box -box gets quite a fair few changes, free to be exact. Dribble more, get further forwards, and also move into channels. So really transforming this box-to-box -box into quite a balanced sort of player to a very attacking one, which is something we need in this team. The inside forward on the left is going to be on attack, on shoot more often. The inverted winger on the right is now also going to be on attack, on roam from position. And to finish it off, the unchanged advanced forward simply on shoot more often. I'll do what I quickly say on this position, you can have shoot more often on the swell if your player has got good finishing. Because honestly, if you're chasing a goal, you need to have shots at the goal. Pretty common sense, but believe it or not, some people don't think of this stuff. So I thought, do you know what? We'll whack it in the instructions, let you guys aware, because sometimes ripping shots off at the goal is the best thing you can do. Team instructions, again, a tiki taka style on the attacking, the attacking mentality. So that is right, it goes up from positive to attacking. That's the first change. The whip remains exactly the same. And to be honest, a lot of it is going to be exactly the same as what it was before. So it is going to be, your pass into space is going to be the real big change, because again, we're taking a little bit of that possession based football away and going more direct. This whole area area here remains exactly the same the directness remains the same the tempo gets up by one because we're really trying to take the game to them this remains the same and of course be more expressive in transition there is nothing to talk about nice and simple lastly out of possession the real big change and key change is going to be taking that line from higher so much higher. So very, very aggressive football. Now, if you are playing as a bit of an underdog team and you don't want to go this far, far into the game in terms of like you think it's too much of a full send, you can obviously drop it down to the higher defensive line. But honestly, if you are trying to get a goal desperately, you need to go all guns blazing. And this will get the job done. I scored so many goals playing with this system. You need to give it a well. Lastly, a defensive variant for those of you that are trying to defend a game out, whether you're a goal up or maybe you're trying to hold on for a point, whatever you're trying to do, this is going to be the perfect tactic to do so. So it is going to be, again, the 3 4 3. I never change the formation because obviously this is based around the manager's tactics. So I have to try and keep them as close as I can to the way he is going to be playing. The goalkeeper is simply going to be on, be on the default. Sorry. Defense, a little bit of a change. So a central defender on the right is going to be on the default. The cover central defender is going to remain unchanged as well. On the left-hand side, we're going to get rid of the ball playing defender and have two central defenders on the left and on the right and obviously the cover. Now, the reason why we have done this is because I don't want the centre-back now dribbling more. I want them to be just doing their job, defending the game out. They don't need to go on crazy runs, nothing like this. Just simply stop shots at the goal. And that does the job. The left-back is going to be a complete wing-back on support. On the default, exactly the same goes for the right-hand side. In the midfield, quite a bit of a mix-up. Bit of a bit of a mixture, bit of a mix-up. A ball when midfield player comes in on support, on pass at shorter, and take fewer risks. And next to him is going to be the central midfield player on support, on take fewer risks, and also tackle harder. So a very low risk. If you want to say low reward midfield, you're not going to score many goals playing this way. Hence why I recommend not going into a game with it, but having it to defend a game out because it will run the clock down. It's very frustrating to play against. And trust me, you're going to rarely concede a goal playing this way of football. The left-hand side is going to be the inside forward on support on the default and on the right, a default inverted winger. So nice and simple to copy. And to finish it off player role wise is going to be the advanced forward without shoot more often default. Instructions all based again off a tiki taka style, but this time the balance mentality. That is right, the balance mentality is going to come in. Going to be a very, very, very possession-based game now, so please do pay attention because we're not going to be as attacking by any means. We are going to be more controlling. So the attack and width is going to go all the way down to narrow, 
the lowest it can be, all the way down to narrow. We're going to remain exactly the same in this aspect because we don't really need to change it. This doesn't mean we're going to go crazy with the attacks. This is just the way we're going to be playing. So we're going to keep that the same. The directness is going to remain on shorter. The tempo is going to be set to lower. So playing with a very low tempo, not really being too aggressive, almost letting them have the ball. Then we have got it. We're going to play it side to side. So not being too energetic on the players, which is quite a nice thing for you guys to hear, I would imagine, because usually a lot of my tactics are very aggressive, high intensity football. This is almost the opposite. Mixed crosses and work ball into the box. Transition, one real big change, and the only change is going to be slow the pace down. Now, I know I said I'm playing possession. You might be saying, Josh, why have you got a counter on then? And that is because Although we are playing possession, I still want to have some form of goal score and threat because the worst thing you can do in a football game is just defend, 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 defend without having any threat going forward. So the idea and the thought process behind this tactic is to occasionally hit on the counter attack when we've got the numbers to do so and maybe when they've overcommitted because then if you go and get the goal you need to go two goals up, you might even be able to go from playing this defensive variant back to the balance. So it's all about having a still enough threat to score the goals, but not being too attack and committed. Lastly, our possession is going to be the high defensive line match with that high press and line of engagement, much more often on the trigger press, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and also stay on feet. So again, we're playing a very low aggressive way of playing football. We're not going to get stuck in. We're going to stay on feet, let them sort of have the ball. And when it's right, make the challenge. We're not going to rush in and, you know, let them just pass around us. We're going to be very hard to break down and that's going to give you guys three variants of this fantastic 3-4-3 it really is it's very nice to do a different formation so if any of you guys have got any recommendations that aren't a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 please keep them coming it can be as random as you want i am still doing 4-3-3s and 4-2-3-1s but for now it is nice to mix it up now and then do you know a three back a five back two back is that even possible but if you guys have enjoyed today's video be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and i'll see you in the next one